and I remember the history of crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about how I, I grew up on 148th Street. In the Bronx? No. no. Oh, no, you were like Washington. I, just, no, I, you're like I was on 88th Street. My mother lived on 88th Street. I went to public school on 89th Street. On oh, so West you were side. just uptown. Up, up, yeah, up, I was up. an uptown guy. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. my godmother, my Santeria godmother, mm -hmm. lived on 148th Street. And I was so she's Harlem. Harlem almost. She is it's, Harlem. It's yeah, Harlem. She is Harlem, yeah. Harlem. And it was a great neighborhood. I learned a lot there. A couple of blocks up, you can cross over to the... To the uh, to, uh, into the fucking Yankee Stadium over there. Right there, 169. Yeah. Across yeah. right over. So it was uh, that whole block. Not when I lived with my, not when I was with my godmother. As I got older, 10 years later, I would go visit my godmother. I would surprise. I'd bring her flowers. She talked to me. And then on the way out, I'd just cross the street and cop Buddha Thai weed. They would sell Buddha Thai, Buddha Thai, Buddha Thai, Buddha Thai. This is 82, 81, 82. Oh, yeah, that's where they're smoking Thai stick and Buddha. Thai stick and Buddha. Yeah. And they either sold you Buddha, Thai stick, or they sold you Sensamilla. It was the beginning that of was Narcos. The, yeah. uh, I, all and, that uh, shit of Narcos, Mexico, when they started sending Sensamilla, that was 1980 fucking That was two. a Jamaican one. Well, the Jamaican one was uh, lamb's bread. Right. That was what they sold in the city. That was big. That fucked you up. I remember that. Why is it called lamb's bread? Because it's some bad shit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that, the people don't even know about lamb's bread today. Very, <laughs> very, very few people know the power of lamb's bread. You know, they used to call all that weed chocolate tie, Buddha tie. Yeah. But basically, it was lamb's bread, and it was Jamaican weed, and it fucked you up and then in I like mean, around 80 45 they started smoking willow blunts well before that was when the sense of me started coming around and then i had a school teacher mr pullman he used to fucking get maui wawi shipped to him i remember maui wawi and he would sell it to you at school and a stick would hilarious 35 dollars for three joints jesus that was more than you ever paid in your life how much was the regular joint like a dollar a joint. Oh, shit, sure. okay. So you could buy a half ounce of, of, of dirt weed and get, you know, pay 25 bucks and get 32 joints so I can make $7. Like that was your thinking when you were a sophomore in high school. Mm -hmm. Seven joints is 20 bucks today. So do you see what I'm saying? Like I made 20 on 25 investment. So I would buy a, a quarter pound for 100 bucks and sell it for 200 right off the bat. I was, I was doing that shit in the late 80s. When I was a sophomore, I hung out with a guy that that's what he sold. He would front it to me. He would drive me. He would drive me, give it to me. I'd go upstairs and I'd keep 100, give him 100. That's how quick I made $100 in those days. That was the eighth grade freshman year. But going back to my godmother, when I went back and this is all in 82, 83. Mm -hmm. I went to Colorado in 83. Came back and I never really went to see my godmother. I was on the shit list. Mm -hmm. And then finally in 85, I, had, I came up with enough guts to go see my godmother. And I went down the stairs and I go, perfect, I'm going to get some weed to go back to Colorado. But as I was waiting at the light to cross, I seen all these motherfuckers putting cardboard down, fucking like making believe fighting. Mm -hmm. And then they would start spitting on their backs and shit. Oh, and so that was more or less. The that was 82 then. Dancing. Yeah. 81, that was, 82. That was... Like, it was everywhere now. Like, I had been in such a cocaine closet, I missed the beginning of all that shit. And i never forget going up to a guy and going, where's the reefer? Who's out? And the guy's like, there ain't no reefer on this block no more. This is straight up Crackville. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. <gasps> like, you know, Crackville was 181st and up. Oh, yeah, it hit the Bronx hard. It hit the Bronx hard. Crackers. <clears throat> I had friends. My friends in the Bronx told me crazy stories. One of them was like, yo, he, he said he was on. I said, when did you, get, when, how long were you on crack for? He goes, right up until around 97. I go, are you fucking kidding me, dude? 97? He goes, yeah, I had it bad. I go, he goes, you ever see those movies and then those abandoned buildings with the fucking crackheads everywhere and fucking just strung out? He goes, I was in those buildings. Fucking raw dogging these crackhead chicks. I'm surprised I don't have AIDS. I'm like, God damn. Wow. Crack was fucked up, man. I could lie, lie to you and tell you I went to a crack then. I never went to a crack then. Did you like, try crack? Yes, here. 
Oh, really? Can you believe that? Here. How was it? 2002. Wow. 2000. I couldn't find it in 2002. 2002. It was a throwback crack. <laughs> 2002, 2003, they sold it on Orange and Salma. Right? In Hollywood. Right down the block from Man's Chinese Theater. Wow. If you cross the street. Yeah, yeah, I know where it is. The building theater, right there. And you walk down, and then you hit Hollywood High School parking lot yeah. right down the corner. There'd be two guys there every night standing there. So I'd be fucked up from the coke and drinking at the comedy store. So I'd drive on Selma all the way home. Cross Highland, cross La Brea. And then by the time I got to Orange, you know, every night they would stare at me. And I would stare at them. And one night I go, what's all this staring about? So I pulled up, I go, what's cracking? And he goes, crack. You know, he didn't say crack. He goes, I got rock. Yeah. So I said, let me get a 20. And he fucking went in the mouth and took a bag out and gave it to me. I'm like, all right, see you later. That's like, normal? Yeah, with a baggie with a twist on oh, it and shit. Yeah. They hide it in their mouth and shit well, so they can worry, swallow like it. it. Right? So he gives me the bag and fucking I go home and my girlfriend at the time, who was now my wife, was sleeping. And I took it home and I fucking... Uh, Crushed it up. This is how stupid Uncle Joey is. I crushed that fucking rock up to death. It was a mountain of coke, and I fucking snorted. And I sat there for 20 minutes, and my throat got a little numb, but nothing happened. The party didn't start. I didn't jerk off, nothing. Yeah. And the next day, I told a dear friend of mine that was a fucking animal what I did. And he goes, they sold your crack, stupid. You got a fucking I, you got a free base that shit. You He goes, you got to smoke that. I got to you smoke crack. Like, I didn't know. He goes, you got to get a pipe and all that. I go, all right. So next night I went over there again. I bought crack and I put in a Coke can. I went home, cracked up a Coke can, put holes in it. And I started smoking crack. And I smoked crack for about six weeks. My wife would wake up in the middle of the night and go, Joey, what's that smell? And I would go, it's a new reefer I got. Go back to bed. <laughs> I would buy four rocks, six rocks. How was it? It was disgusting. It was part of my disgusting days. No, no, no. But how did? Like, what was the buzz like on it? It was like a, a cousin to cocaine. At that time, Russell, I think it was like 2001. Mm -hmm. It was all the same. It didn't matter what night it was. You know, it just it's all one big blur now. But I, it, I, I was I smoked crack for about six or seven weeks. And then I had a two-week run in El Paso. He mm -hmm. used to hire me for like two-week runs. So he would hire me for like one week to open up for Russell as a feature. And he liked me so much, he'd go, why don't you do me a favor? Open for me? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, like, you know, name for a guy like you. You. <laughs> for, uh, you know, when I was a feature, when I was a feature headliner, you know, I could headline, yeah. but I was really a strong feature. He right. would say, open up for Russell, stay, because he had a condo. They go stay and then uh, do a show Wednesday by yourself. And then Russell's cousin's coming in Friday and Saturday. And then you do Sunday. You headline Sunday. And I would do that. So when I went down there, nobody's got cracking up ass. They got the real thing. Mm -hmm. Like they walk it over. Yeah, for you. They just walk it over. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You could call Mexico. Where are you at? I'll be there in 10 minutes. And all of a sudden, a fucking. A fucking uh, a sewer plate pops up. The Mexican comes out with a little mud on his head. Like Felipe on uh, on Three's Company. Yeah. Like, yes. yes. It's crazy. There's <laughs> cocaine everywhere. So when I went down there, I looked for crack. I couldn't find it. So I went back to Snow Coke. That's how I got rid of crack. <laughs> I remember I remember it was, must have been around 1994, and I was driving in Toronto. I thought I was fly because I had this fucking Saturn... Oh, actually, it must have been 95 because I, I had rims on it already. I had a Saturn, but it had no, I didn't have no AC. I didn't have power windows, nothing. So I had to roll down all the windows, and I had a sound system that I put in the trunk. And I'm driving through this crackhead part of town, and uh, I'm at a red light. Music's playing. There's a girl standing at the corner. She's cute. She looks at me and smiles. I go, what's up? I go, where are you going? She goes, I'm going that way. I go, get in. So she gets in. She goes, thanks. Uh, can you take me? I'm going to my uncle's. I go, ah, cool, no problem. Because do you mind if I smoke? I go, ah, now go ahead. She pulls out a fucking asthma inhaler. 
puts a rock on it and starts lighting up in my car. I go, yo, what the fuck you smoking? She goes, I know it's a bad habit. I go, no, no, no. Uh, cigarettes are a bad habit. You're fucking smoking crack in my car. Uh, I go, why don't you smoke some weed? Do you got some? I go, actually, yeah, because I was selling weed at the time. I go, actually, yes, I do. So I, she goes, oh, good. So I went to her uncle's with her, some shady ass building. I walk in. <laughs> uncle's there. <laughs> you, got, you got weed. Yeah, you got weed. Yeah, so I sold him some weed and I just got the fuck out because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get shot, stabbed, whatever's going to happen in here. You know, when you tell stories like this, it's like when I tell stories like this. And it's crazy because people can't fathom that. No, they don't realize how fucking weird our lives are. How weird and crazy position. You know, when you come to Hollywood as a woman, as a young man, you see things. You know, these women that complain this, that, you know, they see something and you just get sucked in by it. And I can tell you something. There was nine parts in my life I can name nine situations in my life where at one point I said to myself, I really don't belong here. Like, Oh, I, just, I say that every fucking day I say that you shit. You know, this isn't who I am at all. I didn't come here to see a guy get beat or a guy get hit in the head with a pipe. <laughs> or, you know, I see my stepfather shoot a guy at eight. I didn't. I wasn't participant to all that stuff. One story that I told on Ari's that I didn't tell the full creepiness of was when I sold that guy the stolen thing and he gave me 60 bucks and he gave me some heroin. That was like a horrible night for me. I made it funny. But if I really sat down with people and described what happened to me that night and how there was an old lady, the, the whole time we did we did coke first and then he's like, you, you should try this heroin. I'm 16. No, oh, wow. I'm 16. He's 29. Who the fuck knew? I don't know he's that much older than me. Yeah, he looked like fucking Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath. But he was cool with all my friends. Like, he was one of the older guys that we were cool with. And when I came in, he, oh, he goes, you want a blowjob? I got a girl in the bathroom that likes to suck dick while you take a shit. Oh, a blowjob. I'm sick of that right there. Just hearing that. That's traumatic <laughs> for some people. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Like, nah, I'm good, bro. I wasn't into disgust yet. I was still a Catholic. My mother had died. Right. And I hadn't lost my faith yet. And I was like, ah, nah, I'm okay. I just want to pick up the 60 bucks. That, uh, you know, and he's like, well, sit down. Let's do a couple lines. Then he came out and did, we did the heroin. When I was on the heroin, he asked me 10 times, like, you sure you don't want that chick to suck your dick? Like, it was so disturbing looking at it now. I didn't make it disturbing. It was a joke. You know, it was a fucking joke. Now I look at it as kind of funny. But I didn't belong there that night. You know? I didn't belong there. Yeah. You know, so. Nobody really belongs It's kind of weird when you have stories like that. That a chick got in your car. I was in Montana. I love to say Missoula. But it could have been Billings. No, it wasn't Billings. It was either Missoula or one of those. I get to the fucking club. Russell, I'm a, a junkie. But I'm in Montana. What are my chances of copying? Mm -hmm. Unless the way uh, the kitchen guy is Mexican. Like I was in South Dakota one time. I made eye contact with the bus boy. Next thing you know, I was snorting coke. You know, he was the only Puerto Rican in town. He was in the Bronx. Hilarious. He was in the service. And on the weekends, he watched dishes at this restaurant I did comedy at. Which it was a triple run. You know what I'm saying? So if you could cop in North the Green Dakota, South Dakota something, you yeah. could cop anywhere. But I'm in Montana. I'm not looking to cop. I'm not looking. I'm not even thinking you're about probably, copping. In your head, you're probably looking forward to a weekend of being clean. Yeah, I was like, I'm doing Montana, Portland. Maybe I'll cop in, I think, Saturday. I was like, I know I can cop at that place. Yeah. So here I am in Montana. Hi, how you doing? Joe Diaz, the feature act. I'm the MC. Nice to meet you. The MC goes up on stage. The owner comes over. He goes, this is my daughter. Girl was fucking beautiful, tall, and, uh, you know, uh, tell her what you want if you're hungry. He walks away. I'm thinking this girl goes to, like, Yale. She had that Yale look mm -hmm. to her. And the girl says, how you doing? How was your drive-in? Is the hotel fine for you? You know how people ask those basic yeah, yeah, questions. Yeah, the, the generics. And right on, she looks me in the eye and she goes, if there's anything you need. I mean anything. 
asked me. I'm like, okay. Let's start off with the basics. Because <laughs> before I buy the fucking lobster Cantonese, I got to try the pork fried rice. <laughs> I go, you got reefer? And she goes, yeah, what do you want? I go, I don't know, give me $50 worth of reefer. Yeah. She goes, I'll be right back. Left, came back, boom, reefer. <clears throat> and she goes, anything else? I go, I don't know. Let me go on stage and I'll think about it. I went on stage, I got on stage. Uh, they paid me. I pulled her aside, I go, can you get some powder? She goes, it's not here. I gotta go for a ride if you wanna come. I go, well, I got the feed track with me. I don't really want them to know what's going on. So she goes, I just bring it to your hotel room. I'm like, okay. You know, half hour, I get a call in the hotel room. I didn't have a cell phone then. And she's like, I'm on my way, I'll be there. She showed up, very nice. Nothing sexual, nothing. She sat down. She goes, do you mind if I do a taste? I go, no, go ahead. And I had stopped to get like beers. I got a beer for her and when I turned around, bro, she was taking out a rig. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she goes, I don't snort that, that's for pussies. She goes, I shoot it. And I'm oh, like, oh, oh, Jesus wow. Christ. So who would expect to see somebody mm. shoot coke? A woman who's beautiful, by the way. This was not some girl with fucked up teeth and a broken car. This girl had a dad who owned a bar. She went to college. She didn't snort coke. She was shooting it. If you thought I expected to see that in, in whatever Montana, no. 